All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of What's in the Night Sky for June 2022. And apologies for no video last month after catching COVID. I had an infection in my throat and my chest, and I lost my voice. I couldn't film, and I just started my road trip around California to photograph the Milky Way. So I'll be uploading the Astro Vlog from that trip this month, so make sure to hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. But coming up this month, we've got lots of exciting events. We've got the peak of Milky Way core season. We've got the start of Noctilucent cloud season. We've got an amazing gathering of all five naked eye visible planets and the moon. We have the first supermoon of 2022. And it's also the month of the summer solstice in the Northern hemisphere. So on June the 21st, we'll have the shortest night of the year in the Northern hemisphere. And in the Southern Hemisphere, it'll be the longest night of the year. But let's start with a general look at what's in the night sky this month. Starting in the Northern Hemisphere, facing north towards the circumpolar constellations, you notice Ursa Major starts the night very high in the sky. If you look to the north-northwest, you'll see Cassiopeia, a nice faint region of the Milky Way emanating from the north-northwest. That goes up to the Cygnus region, which is a much brighter region of the Milky Way, one of my favorite regions. If I just swing the view to the east, you'll notice that as darkness falls, a good opportunity for a Milky Way arch with the core in the southeast. And it's pretty much the last month that you can do this because next month the Milky Way will start too high in the sky and the panorama gets really, really distorted. So make the most of it this month whilst you can. As the night goes on, the Milky Way core continues to arch across the southern horizon. So we're very much in the peak of Milky Way core season now. It's out all night from sunset to sunrise, starting in the southeast, crossing the south and making its way into the southwest before sunrise. Now you'll also notice Saturn, the moon, Jupiter, Mars. This is the view on the morning of the 21st. And as we approach the pre-dawn hours, I'm just going to turn the constellations off. You will notice towards the end of the month, an incredible sight of all five of the naked eye visible planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, and Mercury. And then towards the end of the month, you'll have the moon passing by those morning by morning. So this is the view on the 21st. And then on the 22nd, the moon moving a bit more eastward, so it's between Jupiter and Mars. Then on the 23rd, it's more eastward of Mars. 22nd, probably my favorite composition, in my opinion. So you've got Mercury, Venus, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Very evenly spaced. Nice thin crescent moon as well, so you might get some Earth shine. On the 25th, again, another very photographic opportunity. 26th, and it's right next to Venus. Absolutely stunning. And on the 27th, it goes down to join Mercury, but this will be very difficult to see because it will be very low on the horizon in the bright twilight. So you need a nice, clear view of the horizon for that. Onto the Southern Hemisphere, and you'll notice as darkness falls, the large and small Magellanic Cloud, very low on the Southern horizon. And you also notice that the Milky Way core starts very high in the sky for those in the Southern Hemisphere. And there's a nice opportunity for a Milky Way arch. You have the Crux and the Corina Nebulae almost at the apex of the arch. Just a real beautiful region of the night sky. Swinging over to the east, you'll see how the Milky Way continues to climb higher and higher into the sky as the night goes on. Uh, passes pretty much directly overhead uh, for those of you sort of 25 degrees in latitude and then it stretches from horizon to horizon great time to get the star tracker on the Milky Way core and then you'll notice in the latter half of the night the Milky Way core begins to sink down towards the western horizon and you have another opportunity for a Milky Way arch this time with the core at the apex and the crux and corina now in the south real beautiful opportunities in the southern hemisphere now for those of you in the southern hemisphere the planets and moon will be 
almost in a vertical line against the eastern horizon because obviously in the southern hemisphere the ecliptic is at a much steeper angle um, so that's the view on the 19th 20th 21st 22nd 23rd one of my favorites with the moon sort of in the middle of the planets or 24th even is, uh, is a lot better very evenly spaced saturn obviously way higher than the others but this is such an incredible alignment and then 25th 26th and it's down with venus and 27th it joins mercury but that will be very difficult to see and capture but seriously guys don't miss this opportunity Full moon this month is on the 14th and it's the first super moon of 2022 so it will appear slightly larger and slightly brighter. It's also known as the strawberry moon because it's the time of year where the strawberries come to ripen in North America so we have a super strawberry moon. Before we dive into the special events this month a quick message from the sponsors of today's video Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. I use mine to host my galleries where I can upload my images without compression like you get on social media. You can also use it as a blog to post interesting articles and useful tutorials. It's also where I sell my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. And if it wasn't for my website and online store, I wouldn't be a full-time professional photographer. It's a way for clients to find me and it's a way for me to sell products and make money. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen. You can start with one of their award-winning templates, customize it to your heart's content, and then when you're happy for your website to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain with Squarespace. Now for those of us that are north of 50 degrees in latitude, we unfortunately don't get a night time this month. Um, and we basically get a perpetual twilight, and it's all to do with the position of the sun. So allow me to replay an animation that I made for last month's video. So when the sun hits the horizon, that is zero degrees. As it gets lower, and it's between zero and minus six degrees, that's civil twilight. Between minus six and minus 12 degrees is called nautical twilight. And then between minus 12 and minus 18 degrees, we have astronomical twilight. Anything lower than 18 degrees, and that is official night time. That's as dark as it gets. So for those of you like me in the UK, the sun goes down to astronomical twilight and then starts coming back up again. I mean, if you go further north, uh, you don't even get astronomical twilight, you get nautical twilight. And then once you get to the Arctic Circle, you're in like the north of Norway, the sun doesn't even go below the horizon. <laughs> it sort of comes down, skims the horizon and goes back up. But for those of us between sort of 45 degrees and 65 degrees north in latitude, we have an interesting opportunity for the next two months to photograph noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are the highest known clouds to exist. They form in the mesosphere of Earth's atmosphere, some 80 to 85 kilometers in altitude. And they're normally too thin to see with the naked eye, but because the sun doesn't get too far below the horizon, the sun illuminates the NLCs from underneath, these clouds made of ice crystals. And then we at these latitudes, 45 to 65 degrees north, can see these clouds glowing against the dark backdrop of twilight. The first sighting of the season was already recorded uh, about a week ago from when this video will be going out. And as I speak right now, there's an NLC display visible from Russia. But they're beautiful to see and they're great fun to photograph and I won't go into much more detail in this video because I made an entire video <laughs> about not only photographing NLCs but trying to predict them and you know just some really good information what you need to know about noctilucent clouds and how to photograph them. So do go and check that out if you haven't already and you are sort of within 45 and 65 degrees north in latitude. That's all I've got for you this month, guys. Now onto the hashtag Wittens. For those of you that are new here, every month I set a target subject or theme for people to photograph and then upload your images to social media like Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag Wittens and I pick my favorite three for a prize. Third place wins a copy of my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. Second place wins a Constellation hoodie. And first place wins a photo view photography guidebook of their choice. Two months ago, I set the theme of Panorama. So I'll pick three winners from that. And then following that, 
for this month, I'll pick three random winners. And I was just looking for something that was a little bit different and unique. Starting on the theme of panoramas, in third place was this image from Joseph of a Milky Way arch panorama in Death Valley. And I recently just got back from Death Valley, so I might have been a bit influenced by this. But he's managed to find some really good looking mud cracks. And I just love the processing. The colors are very nice. You've got that nice orange color in the Milky Way. Some interesting mountains as a focal point in the middle and just really nicely executed. In second place was this lovely image from Alexandre and you've got the, the winter Milky Way arch which you can catch in the evening during spring. We've also got the moon in the sky as well. I just love the way this image is composed. You've got that nice path in the middle of the image sort of inviting you into the image and taking you to the building and then up to the moon and the sky. Just a real nice symmetry and balance to this composition which is really really nicely done because it can sometimes be quite difficult to compose panoramas and in first place was this little planet panorama from lucas i just love that the silhouette of that tree the colors are just so spot on you've got the real nice pink red in the hydrogen alpha real nice neutral sky the milky way looking amazing and uh, just overall really nicely processed and a very cool image so well done to lucas for this month, there were lots of incredible images of the lunar eclipse, so I encourage you to go and check out the hashtag Wittens, but I just picked three random winners that I thought were, you know, a little bit unique and different. So in third place was this image from Connor. He's managed to catch a spider hanging in his web at night under the Milky Way, waiting for some prey to sort of land in his net. I thought this was really, really cool to get something so incredibly small with something that's so incredibly big. So really cool. In second place, I've just realized again, it's Alexandre. I didn't realize I featured him twice, but this image of a lighthouse underneath the crescent moon and just amazing colors very otherworldly, almost sci-fi feel to this image. And I really loved how you get the, the warm reflection from the moon mixing with the cold reflection from the lighthouse. I thought that was really cool. And the colors just work really, really well together. This image caught my eye. And in first place was this incredible double Milky Way arch panorama from Pablo. So I believe he's captured these in the same night because you get the uh, the winter milky way arch in the spring evenings and then you get the milky way core arch in the spring mornings so out from sunset to sunrise i captured two wonderful panoramas and blended them together in this almost inception inspired style thought it was really good and i mean the images are just edited very beautifully lots of lovely hydrogen alpha data shining through and uh, yeah, I thought this was really, really amazing. So well done to Pablo. This month, let's go with the theme of moon and planets. That alignment at the end of the month is not to be missed. And there's plenty of opportunities to get all five of the Naked Eye Visible Planets and the moon. So thank you guys for tuning in to another video. Hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out on my Milky Way road trip in California video. And if you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.